Do you have a plan to install IP camera system, but you don't know how to get started? In this video, we are going to discuss how to set up an IP camera system. This will include how to pick an IP camera, and pull the cable from the camera to the network video recorder. And we also will go through the PoE, Power over Ethernet technology. If the hard drive is not pre-installed into the network video recorder, you probably need to manually set up the hard drive. And eventually, we will connect this network video recorder to a router, so you can access the camera through the mobile phone, paper lab, or PC computer. Now let's move to the demonstration world and go through these things step by step. There are several types of IP cameras. These two are the typical type. We got the dome camera, we have the bullet camera. Before we move to the camera, we need to answer one question. Why we want to set up the whole system? We are not making a movie. I think the main reason is when there's something bad happen, we can go back to the network video recorder and play better footage, probably play better footage frame by frame, than looking for the character of the criminal, such as what is the vehicle and what is the color of the dressing. So there's one thing very important it's about the camera, it's not about the how the camera looked. It's about the pixel density. How much pixel the camera can deliver? Because if we want to do the identification, you need to have the enough pixel density. And what decides the pixel density? Of course, the first thing you can come up with is the total pixel the camera can deliver. If you have the two camera, one is the four megapixel, another is eight megapixel. Eight megapixel can deliver about twice pixel than the 4 megapixel IP camera. That makes sense, right? But not only the pixel density, not only the pixel total pixel, but also the view of lens. Let me give you an example. If you just use the same camera, 4 megapixel camera, to catch the image from the playground, the whole football playground, the pixel density it will be very really small because it, the pixel you have for each feet will be very, really less. However, if you use the same 4 megapixel camera just pointing to the entrance of the door, then the pixel density will be very high. The reason is you are using the camera just catch a small area. So when you choose the camera, not only the tie, but also the lens, you need to think about what is the area you want to watch. So not just the, how much pixel the camera can deliver. And these two look quite different. You got the dome and bullet. And in the bullet, if you just deploy the camera outside, I would recommend that you go for the bullet, bullet type camera. The reason is that we're using the, here we're using the glasses. So if the glasses just get dirty, if it's a little dirty, it's still okay. But this is the surface with the current. If the, it gets dirty, when the light travels through this cover, it will get distorted. Then you get not clear image. So when you place this outside, it will be better. However, if you just put inside, especially some kind of like a club, you may don't want the camera to become so large and so obviously. So your customer will get uncomfortable with the camera. So then you can choose this mini dome camera. The second thing is the cable. We need to pull the cable from each camera to the network video recorder. With the PoE power over Ethernet, there's no need to set the power source next to the camera. We can use single Ethernet cable to send both power and data to each camera. Where we put the camera, we got the camera ready. That's nice, right? So how to choose the cable? So we use the K5 or K6 Ethernet cable? I think the K5 will be totally enough. But if the cost is not so tight for you, you can go for the K6. K6 will be nice. But the point is, you would better to choose the cable which is made of the pure copper. The reason is now we are using the cable to send both power and data, especially the power. There's always power loss in the copper cable. So part of the power will convert to the heat and loss in the area. If you just use the low cost tie like the CCA, it could generate very serious power loss. That's why I always say it's better to use the pure copper for PoE technology. And there are also about distance limit. The maximum distance 
between the camera and the number of video recorder is limited to about 328 feet, just 100 meter. If you need to put the cable beyond 328 feet, then you need to add additional equipment, PoE standard. And one PoE standard can repeat another 328 feet. You can reference my another video, how to use the PoE standard to set up the long run PoE network. The next important stuff is the network video recorder. There are two kinds of network video recorder. One is the network standalone network video recorder. Another is the network video recorder with the PoE switch built in, just like this one. There's four PoE port, which means we can connect this network video recorder to four PoE IP camera and supply both power and data for this IP camera. Okay, first let me pop the PoE NVR. And this is the uplink port. We're supposed to connect this port to the router. And here we got two output ports. We can either connect to a HDMI monitor or just a VGA monitor. Okay, this is the cable from the HDMI monitor. Let me just connect to the monitor. And now here we have the two USB ports. I'm going to connect one of the ports to the mouse. So we have the operation on the MVR. Then let's hold up the camera. Here we got two cables from the camera. Just pick one of the port for the first camera and another port for another camera. You see, once I connect the cable from the camera to the network video recorder, both indicators on. That means now the network video recorder is getting the data exchange, also the power to each camera. And you can see the camera's live now, both cameras live. It depends on how the network video recorder decides. Like this, network video recorder will continue checking the port, whatever the camera connecting to this port, and make the connection automatically. But another network video recorder, they may not doing this, but it's quite simple. Even the network video recorder is not going to connect the camera automatically. Now I can, I can use the mouse. Just come to here. Right click, we can find the channel set. And this is the credential we need to log into the control. And here we can see the camera, two cameras being connected. Let me just remove one of the camera from the list. And we click search. Then the network video recorder will discover whatever the camera connecting to the network video recorder. Let's just pick the camera we removed just now and click Double click, it will add to the network video recorder and click apply. That will be it. Then we are getting better camera. There's still other features we may use. Let's just go through some of them. I think the one way you need to do is the, about the playback. And we can choose to play the video file recording to the network video recorder. You see these two are the video getting by the network video recorder. You see in this camera, zoom in and zoom out. The reason is because this is a motorized zoom camera. You need to zoom in and zoom out to find the best focus. And here we can see, this is the footage recording by the network video recorder. You can drag to have the digital zoom. And there's another feature. It's about the motion detection. Without the motion detection, it will be very difficult to look for the footage recording into the video recorder. Let's say if there's 24 hour footage, even you're using the fast speed to play back the file, it may still take you up to three hours to go through all the file. But the motion detection can flag the session in red. If there's anything changed in front of the camera, then it will flag that session in red. So when you play back the footage, you just need to concentrate on the session which is the color. So that's the beautiful of the motion detection too. But the motion detection is not accuracy. Anything change in form of the camera, even the, just the flash light or the tree is moving, it will generate an alarm and just flag the session, session in red. So that's not efficiency. Now we don't use the motion detection. We we'll use, you can call it human shade detection. You can consider it's the advanced motion detection. Instead, it's checking the difference between two images the human shape detection, you try to detect the human shape in form of the camera. You see, 
for human for human you have two eyes two air also the hands so the camera can figure out whether this is the human or it's not human then you start recording that's quite efficiency the camera still will keep recording but it just flat the session with human in red so it saves the time for you to play back the footage all right there's one more thing about how to connect the network video recorder to a router so eventually we can see the video on the table lab pc computer the connection is quite simple you just need short punch patch code to link the uplink port to one of the port in the router then the setup should be ready the next thing is you need to install the app on a mobile phone pc computer or table lab then the first time you try to hook up this network video recorder to your mobile device make sure your mobile device like a mobile phone is connecting to the same router because in this way the app will discover that whatever the device the camera the network video recorder connecting to the same router because the app will use in the broadcast message send a message to the router and the message will go to all the port all the IP device then the network video recorder and the camera will respond and finally we can you can make the connection in this video we are using just the PoE switch built into the network video recorder to set up a system but if you want to set up the IP camera system with an external switch you can reference my another video how to use the PoE switch to set up IP camera system